Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in the last class we practiced uh, surface integral and we also um, learnt about uh, Green's theorem where we could connect um, the line integral uh, with the surface integral in a way and uh, if we have a certain form given um, let's say in the line integral then from there we can uh, guess the m and n part of this, uh, integ uh, of this uh, integral and from there we can convert this line integral if, the, if m and n have continuous partial derivatives then we can convert this uh, surface integral uh, this line integral into a surface integral and um, more uh, how to say in more situations uh, where you can actually convert a complicated line integral into a simple uh, surface integral uh, and vice versa. So, you may have a um, how to say complicated surface integral could be and uh, uh, if you see that uh, you can actually integrate it back to m and n then uh, you, that line integral might become easier. So, it works in both ways it is just that your m and n needs to have uh, continuous partial derivatives. So, we practiced a um, few examples uh, motivated from this on uh, Green's theorem part. And now we will start with uh, volume integral. So we did surface integral, uh, Green's function, and then now today we will practice some volume integral examples, and then we will move to uh, Gauss divergence theorem. All right. So volume integral basically mean that uh, suppose the statement goes like this. Uh, so suppose uh, you have uh, suppose um, V is a volume is a volume bounded by a surface S bounded by a surface S suppose f x y z b or is a is a single valued function defined on V. So, that means uh, f x y z is a uh, is defined on capital V. So, it maps actually from V to uh, set of all real numbers in a way and uh, if um, when we write then the volume integral basically then the volume integral then the volume integral volume integral so it follows the similar motivation uh, what we have learned for the function of uh, one variable so in case of function of one variable you have an interval then you divide this interval into several sub uh, n number of sub intervals and then sum of uh, the uh, some of the areas of each of these sub intervals when you sum them and when you make n goes to infinity then that gives you actually the um, the integral of that function defined in that uh, in that interval a to b so it's also the same here so you basically consider sub volumes on v and then you consider the volume of uh, um, of uh, of those uh, uh, how to say sum of those uh, sub volumes times f and then you basically take n tends to infinity and that gives you actually the volume integral. So, the motivation is pretty much same what we have learnt uh, in case of function of one variable or function of two variable. So, I am not writing all those things, I am just writing the, 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 the notation for the volume integral because our main target here to practice few examples because we have very less number of lectures left. So, then the volume integral of f x y z uh, is denoted by is denoted by or given by uh, let us say I am writing I v. So, I is for the integral, v is for the volume and then you write triple integral. So, triple integral is for the volume integral and we write f x y z d v. All right. So, here uh, f x and uh, suppose if uh, um, uh, if you if our uh, 
dv. So, if we divide this uh, v into three uh, into into sub into sub volumes, then in that case, on one of those sub volumes, uh, we can take uh, um, the length, breadth, and height as dx, dy, and dz. So that's basically the volume element in a way. So this can be written as integral over the volume v f x y z dx dy dz. So, that is basically our dv. So, this is the volume element dx dy and dz. So, this is the required volume element and um, if capital F, if f is a vector function, if f is a vector function say capital F then i v is integral uh, capital F d v. So, capital F is a vector function when we are doing the volume integral uh, then we have to take this uh, dot product is uh, also an example of volume integral. So, basically instead of uh, d v we take a uh, capital D uh, this uh, d v vector all right and this is also an example of um, of uh, volume uh, integral. So, that is how we write the volume integral. Now, let us see um, uh, if we can uh, solve some examples. So, I am just uh, looking for an example in my lecture note yes. So, to start with let me consider this example evaluate integral over v phi d v where phi is 45 x square times y and uh, v is the volume or a closed region. bounded by the planes 4 x plus 2 y plus z equals to 8 and x equals to 0, y equals to 0 and z equals to 0. So, obviously drawing this plane is very easy because it is actually um, x equals to 0, y equals to 0 and z equals to 0 and bounded by that plane uh, 4 x plus 2 y plus z equals to 8. So, you can actually be able to draw this in 3D this plane and it is fairly a simple uh, domain basically uh, or, a bound, or a bounded volume all right. So, here we if you want to evaluate the limit for uh, let us say when uh, y and z are 0 then x is varying from 0 to 4. So, x intercept will be 0 0 and 4 0 uh, sorry uh, x intercept would be 0 0 and 2 0 yeah. So, there is a 4 here excuse me uh, y intercept would be 0 0 and uh, 0 4 0 and uh, z intercept would be 0 0 8 in a way. So, you, you, you are getting the idea what I am trying to say. So, when you draw this uh, you can actually uh, how to say get the x uh, the point where it is intersecting the x axis, the point where it is intersecting the y axis and the point where it is intersecting the z axis based on that you can be able to draw this plane. So, it is a bounded domain and now if we want to evaluate the volume integral. So, as I was saying we can write it as i v and this is volume integral phi d v. So, volume integral over v phi is 45 x square y and d v is the volume element d x d y d z. Now, to write the limits for x y and z how do we calculate the limits. So, first of all our z z is varying from 0 to 8 minus 4 x minus 2 y then y is varying from if z is 0 then uh, 8 minus 4 x and when y and z both are 0 then x is varying from 0 to 2 right. So, now to integrate first of all we integrate with respect to z. So, x is varying from 0 to 2 y is varying from 0 to 
8 minus 4 x and then this is 45 x square y because the uh, because the integrand this integrand is independent of z and here z is varying from 8 minus z 0 to 8 minus 4 x minus 4 y here d z and then we have d x d y. So, this will be d z and at z equals to 0 at 0. So, ultimately we will obtain um, integral 0 to 2 integral 0 to 8 minus 4 x and this will be 45 x square y uh, 8 minus 4 x minus 2 y dx dy and now we integrate with respect to y. So, this will be integral x running from 0 to 2 um, 45 uh, x square um, or let me write the limit for y. So, I will write the limit for y y running from 0 to 8 minus 4 x and then 8 minus 4 x and then this will be 45 x square y and this one will be 8 minus 4 x minus 2 y and this is d y and then we are integrating with respect to d x. Sorry about the brackets, uh, but uh, you can use the correct bracket. So, here it should be curly bracket and then the big bracket. Um, but uh, uh, using bracket is not the not the concern here so i'm i'm not focusing on that thing and now we can integrate this and integrate uh, when we integrate with respect to y so this will become uh, so we multiply by 45 uh, inside this uh, bracket and then we do the integration so everything is um, pretty uh, straightforward and ultimately we will obtain 45 times uh, x running from 0 to 2 x square by 3 and this will be 4 minus 2 x whole to the power 3 dx and uh, when we integrate with respect to x then this whole thing will reduce to uh, 128. So, the required answer is 128. So, other than doing some complicated uh, arithmetic calculation there is not there is there is really nothing much in this example. So, what you really had to do just substitute the value of the uh, of this uh, integrand here and then guess the and uh, then calculate the limit. Uh, for z, y and x. So, z is running from 8 minus 4 x minus 2 y similarly for y similarly for x and then integrate individually and just do some complicated calculations here. So, that is that's the only uh, difficult part in here other than that this example is pretty uh, straightforward. So, this is uh, an, uh, an example or interesting example where we calculated the volume integral. Um, next is the statement of uh, Gauss divergence theorem. So, let me go to the statement. Yes. So, now um, if you have given uh, as we saw in this example, if you are given a function phi or f whatever it is and if you are given the volume v then you can be able to calculate the um, volume integral. Similarly, if it is a vector function then you take the dot product f dot dv and uh, just calculate the limit, substitute the limit and then that will be uh, that will be pretty much it. So, uh, in in either case, it's, it's a very generic uh, example. Now uh, we go to a very important theorem uh, in vector calculus, and not only in vector calculus, it is used in other fields as well. Um, for example, um, um, in partial differential equations, in some context, you you use these theorems, uh, or be, in particular, this Gauss divergence theorem. So let me give you the statement. Gauss. divergence theorem. So, the statement goes like this. Uh, suppose V is the volume bounded by bounded by a closed piecewise smooth surface S. So, V is bounded by a closed uh, sm piecewise smooth surface uh, S. So, uh, it can be a parallelopiped. So, parallelopiped uh, if you can if you consider um, or a cube uh, then in that case um, cube is like only piecewise smooth in a way and uh, you have the volume V enclosed inside the cube. So, examples like that. Um, or you can have a sphere uh, which um, 
which which doesn't have any uh, discontinuity or something so you can always consider a smooth surface as well or you can also consider a piecewise smooth now uh, suppose uh, capital f x y z be a vector function be a vector function of position which is continuous continuous and has continuous first order partial derivatives partial derivatives first order partial derivatives in v uh, sorry on v on v then on v then we can write volume integral of divergence of v is equals to surface integral of f dot n d s where n is the n is the outward drawn normal unit normal actually unit normal vector 2s so that means if you have a given volume v which is bounded by a piecewise smooth a smooth surface actually say s and if you have a vector function f x y z which is defined on v then in that case we, of course it uh, also needs to have it uh, have continuous first order partial derivatives uh, so that you can write this thing uh, then in that case uh, the, uh, the volume integral of divergence of v is equals to f dot n d s or in terms of notation you can write volume integral the gradient operator times v dv so there is a dv missing dv is equals to surface integral of f dot n ds so this is the required gauss divergence formula and uh, you need to have just a continuous first order partial derivatives for this uh, vector function uh, sorry this is v f right so this is f so it's not v this is f so divergence of f dv is equal to f dot n ds so similarly this is the divergence of f um, i thought it's uh, the function v but it is actually f so here you take a divergence of f dv is equal to surface integral f dot n ds and similarly in terms of uh, notations you can write uh, this uh, divergence of f dv is equal to f dot n ds so this is um, a very important theorem in uh, vector calculus and um, if uh, so it has also different uh, different uh, uh, how to say uh, varieties in a way i mean uh, you can you can reformulate these equation uh, the, this equation in several other forms so um, um, if uh, if we assume that uh, f has three parts so alternatively alternative forms alternative form so, if I assume that our vector function f has three components f 1 i, f 2 j and f 3 k let us say and uh, uh, if alpha, beta and gamma be the angles be the angles or are the angles alpha, beta, gamma are the angles which uh, outward drawn normal or unit normal unit normal n makes with positive direction with positive directions of x y and z axis then uh, obviously we know that cos alpha 
cos beta and cos gamma are the direction cosines then are the direction cosines this is from our uh, 3d geometry you can have a look in any standard book on 3d geometry so these are the direction cosines and um, of n and we can be able to write and we have and we have and uh, we have so this is and we have our n as cos alpha i plus cos beta j plus cos gamma k. So, we can be able to write uh, our um, n in this fashion. So, therefore, from here f dot n would be uh, f dot n would be uh, f 1 cos alpha plus uh, f 2 cos beta plus f 3 cos gamma. And uh, our required Gauss divergence formula, let us call it equation 1. So, the from equation 1 we will have uh, from 1 we will have volume integral divergence of f. So, when I am charging the, uh, the, the divergence operator on f then it will be del f 1 by del x plus del f 2 by del y plus del f 3 by del z times d x d y d z equals to right hand side surface integral f dot n d s. So, this is f 1 cos alpha f 2 cos beta and f 3 cos gamma d s is uh, the surface element. So, you can have uh, d s as um, uh, depending on uh, the co co cos alpha here you can have d y d z um, uh, this one is d x d z and this one is uh, d oh, uh, this one is uh, d x d y. So, I can I can write here as uh, surface integral f 1 cos alpha uh, d y d z plus this one is f 2 cos beta d x d z plus this one is f 3 cos gamma d x d y. So, this is the right hand side or the surface integral part. So, um, yes. So, this is how we express this in terms of the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So, now nothing is in the vector form, everything is in the Cartesian coordinate system and um, um, based on this uh, given form, uh, we can express this, uh, uh, this uh, volume integral this in this way. So, this uh, volume integral has a very um, as I was saying it has a very wide application in vector calculus and in other fields as well. So, we will uh, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, learn about those things uh, later on, but today we will practice a uh, uh, few examples. So, to start with let me consider our first example. So, for any closed surface let us consider the first example for any closed surface closed surface S prove that surface integral of Karloff f dot n d s equals to 0. So, this is what we have to prove. So, since we have Karloff f that means uh, the function f has uh, continuous partial derivatives uh, and the function itself is continuous. So, we have to prove this therefore, by divergence theorem by divergence theorem or Gauss divergence theorem by divergence theorem what we will have curl of f dot n d s. So, now if we go back to the divergence theorem it is divergence of f and that f is here f dot n d s. So, in this case that f is actually curl of f right. So, I can write uh, volume integral over v divergence of curl of f because our f function is curl of f d v. So, if you calculate divergence of curl of f, so we can write it in terms of notation. So, this is divergence and this is curl of f and if you calculate, so this one will actually give us a del y. Uh, uh, so, if f has 3 components then this one will give uh, f 3 del del z, f 2 del del y and things like that, but we are taking the dot product with respect to um, with respect to uh, x actually. So, uh, this will be uh, it will be uh, we can show that uh, this this uh, this thing here uh, will actually be 0. So, uh, we can calculate this and uh, this will actually lead to 0 
dv and uh, therefore, the whole thing is 0. So, since divergence of curl of f is equals to 0, uh, the whole volume integral will be 0. So, you see uh, instead of doing this uh, complicated calculation, we use a Gauss divergence theorem and we arrived from here to here and this is we know how to calculate. So, this we, calcul uh, we can calculate and by doing that our answer is 0. So, um, of course, uh, using Gauss divergence theorem is very uh, how to say beneficial here. Now, let me consider uh, an example, another example. So, example let us say 2, if f x y z is equals to a x i plus b y j plus c z k, where a, b, c are constants are constants are constants so that surface integral f dot n d s is equals to 4 by 3 pi a plus b plus c where s is the unit sphere where s is the unit sphere. All right, is the surface of course. S is the surface of unit sphere. S is the surface of unit sphere. So here we are given to evaluate the surface integral. If we really want to do that, we can do that by taking uh, uh, f dot n. So we have to calculate n from the surface uh, of the sphere. So uh, the, the the equation of the sphere can be written x square plus y square plus z square equals to one. From there, we can calculate grad of that uh, that expression and then we can calculate n, we can calculate n cap taking the projection and all that. So, of course, we can do that. However, if we want to use the divergence theorem, then by divergence theorem, we can write surface integral of f dot n ds, whatever it is here can be written as volume integral divergence of f dv and if we take the divergence then this will be um, divergence of f would be uh, just a plus b plus c because every partial derivative will go to the every term and then this will be a plus b plus c times dv and this is basically a plus b plus c uh, times uh, volume integral 1 dv. Now, v is the volume enclosed, uh, v is the volume of that sphere. So, when you are integrating the constant function that means you are basically getting the volume v right so this is this is what we will get actually so we'll get basically the volume v but the volume v is the volume of that sphere and the volume of that uh, unit sphere in this case would be 4 by 3 pi r cube r is 1 so this is basically 4 by 3 pi a plus b plus c you see just a simple application of divergence theorem has reduced our effort in such a uh, i mean nice manner. So, we really do not have to calculate any n or uh, do not have to take any projection or anything like that. We just had to use uh, Gauss divergence theorem and by that Gauss divergence theorem everything reduced into a four line calculation. So, this uh, divergence theorem uh, is proven to be a very handy tool and uh, we will practice few more examples just to show you how nice and convenient this Gauss divergence theorem is. So, today we will stop here and uh, in our next class we will uh, continue with the examples on divergence theorem. So, I thank you for your attention and I will uh, see you in the next class.